In a world where the skies are increasingly dominated by the stealth of American F-35s and the growing threat of China's J-20 Mighty Dragon, Europe had a choice, be left behind or fight back. They chose to fight, and what they built is nothing short of a masterpiece of modern engineering, the Eurofighter Typhoon. Today, we're diving deep into how Europe crafted one of the deadliest fighter jets on Earth, a machine designed not just to survive in the battles of tomorrow, but to dominate them. From its origin story in Cold War politics to the cutting-edge technology that puts it toe-to-toe -to -toe with the world's best, buckle up. This is the story of the Eurofighter Typhoon. When the Cold War was reaching its final chapters in the late 1970s and early 1980s, the major powers of Europe knew they faced a growing problem. Their fighter fleets, like the British Tornado and German F-4 Phantom II, were aging, and the next generation of threats was already emerging. New Soviet aircraft like the MiG-29 and Su-27 promised unmatched speed, agility, and firepower. Europe needed a counterpunch, fast. Rather than go it alone, four nations, the United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, and Spain, joined forces to create something revolutionary. This decision led to the formation of the Eurofighter Consortium, a unique collaboration among industrial giants. BAE systems from the United Kingdom, Airbus from Germany and Spain, and the Italian Leonardo. Initially called the European Fighter Aircraft Project, the goal was simple but ambitious. Develop a fighter that could win air superiority battles and also strike targets on the ground. It had to be faster, smarter, and more adaptable than anything that came before. However, building an aircraft by committee wasn't easy. Different countries had different needs, priorities, and budget constraints. Political disagreements almost killed the program multiple times, but through relentless negotiation and shared vision, they pressed on. By 1994, the prototype Eurofighter DA-1 took to the skies, signaling that Europe was back in the game. The Typhoon wasn't just about defending Europe, it was about proving that collaboration could outmatch even the biggest global players. At first glance, the Eurofighter Typhoon looks like something out of a science fiction movie. And that's no accident. Every line, every angle of its sleek body is designed for pure performance. The Typhoon uses a delta wing and canard configuration, a setup rarely seen outside the most advanced jets. The canards, small forward wings near the cockpit, give it incredible agility. They allow the Typhoon to make razor-sharp turns and react almost instantly to pilot inputs, making it one of the most maneuverable fighters ever built. Powering this beast are two Eurojet EJ-200 engines. Together, they provide an astonishing thrust-to-weight ratio, meaning the Typhoon can climb, accelerate, and outmaneuver almost anything in the sky. Thanks to these engines, the Typhoon can achieve supercruise, the ability to fly faster than the speed of sound without using fuel-hungry afterburners, a feature it shares with elite fighters like the American F-22 Raptor. But raw speed and agility aren't enough in modern warfare. That's why the Typhoon is packed with some of the most advanced electronics available. Its Captor EAESA radar can track multiple air and ground targets simultaneously, offering pilots a crystal clear view of the battlefield. Meanwhile, the Pirate Infrared Search and Track IRST system can detect enemy aircraft without even turning on radar crucial for stealthy operations. In terms of firepower, the Typhoon is a true multi-role fighter. It can carry an extensive arsenal, Meteor Beyond Visual Range missiles, Storm Shadow cruise missiles, Brimstone precision bombs, and even nuclear weapons if required. Air-to-air -air dogfights, ground attacks, suppression of enemy defenses, the Typhoon is built to excel in every mission type. This perfect blend of speed, agility, and technology makes the Eurofighter Typhoon one of the deadliest threats any enemy could face. Building a fighter jet as complex as the Eurofighter Typhoon isn't just about advanced design. It's about precision teamwork across borders. Unlike traditional aircraft projects that center production in one country, the Typhoon is built through a distributed manufacturing system. Major components are produced simultaneously across Europe. In Germany, Airbus manufactures the center fuselage. BAE Systems in the UK handles the front fuselage and canopy. Italy's Leonardo builds the left wing and some rear fuselage sections, while Spain's Airbus division produces the right wing and other structural parts. Once these parts are ready, each nation's assembly plant puts together its own version of the Typhoon, customized to meet the specific needs of its air force. For example, RAF Typhoons may have different communications gear compared to German or Italian ones. 
This method keeps national industries involved and protects thousands of high-tech jobs across Europe. The production process also leans heavily on cutting-edge technologies. Engineers use digital twin models, simulating every component virtually before it's physically built. Advanced 3D printing is employed to create certain titanium and composite parts faster and with higher precision. This multinational approach, although complicated, has proven effective. It fosters innovation, strengthens European defense industries, and ensures that each typhoon rolling off the line is at the forefront of modern aerospace engineering. The result? A fighter jet that's not just European in name, but truly European in its DNA. Since entering service in the early 2000s, the Eurofighter Typhoon has proven itself not just as a showpiece but as a true warhorse for the nations that operate it. The Typhoon is flown by some of the world's most advanced air forces, including the United Kingdom's Royal Air Force (RAF), the German Luftwaffe, the Italian Air Force, and the Spanish Air and Space Force. It's also exported to countries like Saudi Arabia, Austria, Kuwait, and Qatar, showing its global appeal. In real-world missions, the Typhoon has seen extensive action. RAF Typhoons have patrolled the skies during Operation Shader, striking ISIS targets in Iraq and Syria with remarkable precision. They've also been key players in NATO's Baltic air policing missions, intercepting Russian aircraft that wandered too close to European airspace. The Typhoon is not just limited to combat, it plays a vital role in air defense, standing on Quick Reaction Alert QRA, 24-7, ready to scramble within minutes to counter any airborne threat. During major NATO exercises like Red Flag and Joint Warrior, Typhoons routinely demonstrate superior dogfighting skills and seamless interoperability with Allied forces. One of the biggest strengths of the Typhoon is its adaptability. It has transitioned from an air superiority fighter to a true multi-role platform capable of precision strikes, electronic warfare, and reconnaissance, giving commanders a powerful and flexible tool in any conflict. Wherever it's deployed, the Typhoon sends a clear message. Europe is ready for whatever challenge comes next. While the Eurofighter Typhoon was a game-changer when it first entered service, standing still is not an option in modern warfare. That's why Europe has invested heavily in keeping the Typhoon at the cutting edge. One of the most important upgrades is the introduction of the Captor EAESA radar, also known as ECRSMK0. This new radar provides dramatically improved range, target tracking, and resistance to jamming, giving pilots an unmatched advantage in detecting and defeating enemies before they even know what's coming. Electronic warfare capabilities are also getting a massive boost. The Typhoon is being equipped with the latest self-protection suites, enhancing survivability against radar-guided and infrared threats. Advanced jammers and decoys will make it even harder for enemy missiles to lock on and destroy the Typhoon. The cockpit is seeing upgrades, too. The Stryker 2 helmet-mounted display gives pilots a futuristic edge. Real-time targeting data, weapon queuing, and critical flight information all displayed directly onto the pilot's visor, even in complete darkness. Looking further ahead, the Typhoon is part of the broader European vision for air dominance. It serves as the backbone for the upcoming Global Combat Air Program, GCAP, a partnership between the UK, Italy and Japan to build a sixth-generation fighter jet by the 2030s. Technologies developed for GCAP, like artificial intelligence, unmanned teaming and advanced stealth, will feed back into Typhoon upgrades to keep it dominant well into the 2040s. The Typhoon isn't just surviving in the modern battlefield, it's evolving to conquer it. When sizing up the Eurofighter Typhoon against the world's most advanced fighters from China and the US, the comparisons get intense and revealing. First, let's look at China's J-20 Mighty Dragon. The J-20 is a stealth fighter designed to slip past radars and strike from long range. In contrast, the Typhoon isn't a pure stealth platform. However, the Typhoon beats the J-20 hands down in agility and dogfighting ability. Thanks to its superior thrust-to-weight ratio and Delta Canard design, the Typhoon can outmaneuver the J-20 in close-range combat, where stealth means little and quick reactions mean everything. Against the American F-22 Raptor, the Typhoon faces a tough challenge. The F-22's stealth and advanced avionics give it a first-shot advantage. However, the Typhoon remains highly competitive, especially at longer ranges with its Meteor missiles, which are arguably the best air-to-air -air missiles in the world today. 
In exercises like Red Flag, typhoons have even scored simulated kills against raptors by using smart tactics and leveraging their superior situational awareness and electronic warfare systems. And when compared to the F-35 Lightning II, which is more of a strike fighter than a pure air dominance machine, the Typhoon shines in terms of speed, agility, and aerial combat capabilities. The F-35's stealth and sensor fusion are unmatched, but in a traditional dogfight, the Typhoon would likely have the edge. Bottom line? The Typhoon may not be the stealthiest jet on the battlefield, but it brings a lethal combination of speed, agility, firepower, and adaptability that few fighters can match. The Eurofighter Typhoon is much more than just a fighter jet. It's a symbol of European strength, innovation, and independence. In a world where threats can come from anywhere, whether from the east, across the Atlantic, or even cyberspace, Europe needs to maintain its own technological and military edge. The Typhoon ensures that European nations don't have to rely solely on American hardware like the F-35 or scramble to catch up to China's growing air power. Economically, the Typhoon sustains tens of thousands of high-tech jobs across the continent. It strengthens industries in aerospace, electronics, cybersecurity, and advanced manufacturing, sectors crucial for national security and economic growth. Militarily, it provides a backbone for NATO's air defenses, ensuring that Europe can defend itself, project power abroad, and support allied operations anywhere in the world. The Typhoon isn't just a plane, it's Europe's commitment to staying a major player in the 21st century's great power competition. From its roots in Cold War urgency to its current role as a global air power, the Eurofighter Typhoon has proven that Europe can stand shoulder to shoulder with any superpower. It's not just a fighter jet. It's a living symbol of what collaboration, innovation, and sheer determination can achieve. As the world edges into an era of new rivalries and high-tech warfare, the Typhoon remains a sharp sword in Europe's arsenal, ready to defend, ready to strike, and ready to lead. If you're fascinated by the technology shaping the future of warfare, make sure to like this video, subscribe for more deep dives into military innovation, and let us know in the comments. Do you think the Eurofighter Typhoon can outmatch the next generation of global threats?